The child singer Sophie Fatou was born in November 2012 and became one of the youngest talents in the world to go viral following her America's Got Talent, or AGT, audition, which aired in 2018. Sophie's YouTube channel currently has over 450,000 subscribers and her cover of Fly Me to the Moon has been viewed over 100 million times. Sophie, who also models and has worked with Kardashian Kids and Modern Child amongst other well-known brands, stunned the judges of AGT with her powerful version of Frank Sinatra's My Way and was soon dubbed the cutest reality show contestant in history. Unfortunately, she was eliminated in the judge cut section of the show as the judges felt that she was still too young for such a stressful competition. Prior to appearing in AGT, Sophie also charmed the audience of Little Big Shots, a more age-appropriate talent show aimed at children, with an IMDb page advertising her as one of the youngest jazz recording artists in history, Sophie has an undoubtedly bright future ahead of her. The precocious prodigy who made history as the youngest ever contestant on AGT also boasts the title of being the youngest ever jazz artist to record an album at Los Angeles Capitol Records Studio. So what became of Sophie after being eliminated from AGT? Shortly after her musical aspirations were temporarily put to an end, Sophie transitioned into acting. Since then, she's had a handful of minor roles in shows such as The Kids Are Alright, Will and & Grace, and Hacks, mostly guest appearing in single episodes. The youngster was also invited to perform on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Sophie currently has over 100,000 Instagram followers and regularly posts photos of her family or at photo shoots. Her parents, Brandon and Victoria, are supportive of their daughter's career and have even started a family YouTube channel onto which they upload sneak peeks of their daily comings and goings. Brandon is a fitness expert with over two decades of experience and the founder of CorrectiveX, which provides customers a plethora of services such as personalized programs, pain management, remote training, and corrective exercise regimes. Brandon is also believed to have a son from a previous relationship. As for Victoria, it's clear to see who Sophie inherited her musical skills from, as the glamorous redhead is a talented award-winning concert pianist. 2022 was a big year for Sophie's career, as she made her big screen debut with a small role in Last Looks. After enjoying the holiday season with her nearest and dearest, Sophie has yet to announce upcoming projects as of January 2023. Produced by Psycho Entertainment and Fremantle USA, AGT forms part of Simon Cowell's Global Got Talent franchise. The US series premiered in June 2006 on NBC. Judges, current and former, include household names such as Sharon Osbourne, Sofia Vergara, and David Hasselhoff all of whom have excelled in their respective careers. Magic performances, singing, dancing, and comedy skits are the most common acts seen on the show. However, there have been some truly unforgettable novelty acts on AGT over the years. Who can forget the infamous professional regurgitator who beat the odds and reached the semi-final stage of the competition? Although not all of them became famous, the winners of the show are given an attractive cash prize and their own headline show on the Las Vegas Strip. AGT averages 10 million viewers per season and has birthed spin-off shows including AGT Extreme and AGT The Champions. In 2013, a book entitled Inside AGT, The Untold Stories of America's Got Talent was published containing insider knowledge and interviews with contestants. That's not to say that AGT hasn't seen its fair share of controversy. Gabrielle Union, the A-list actress and wife of basketball legend Dwayne Wade, allegedly suffered racism and sexism on the set of the show. Gabrielle was an AGT judge for just one season and was reportedly fired after speaking up about the toxic work environment, which led to her filing a discrimination complaint with the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing. Mere months after the lawsuit was filed, NBC and Gabrielle settled the case out of court in late 2020, as Gabrielle claimed to have been threatened by a former executive of the network, many believe that NBC paid a handsome sum of money to avoid the ugly details coming out and being reported on. It's been alleged that Gabrielle was branded difficult after complaining about Simon smoking indoors and that her hairstyle was criticized for being too ethnic. 
It's interesting to note that, although NBC settled the case, an independent investigation failed to find proof of Gabriel's claims, but racial tensions in the US at the time, caused by the tragic death through police brutality victim George Floyd, the network obviously preferred to play it safe and avoid negative publicity. In 2017, supermodel Tyra Banks was accused of verbally abusing and physically manipulating a female contestant's young daughter. The contestant, referred to in court documents as Jane Doe as she preferred to not be identified by name, filed an 18-page lawsuit against the show's production company. According to Jane, Tyra ridiculed her and her husband's performance of a song they had written about their daughter, who was identified in the lawsuit as Mary Doe. The lawsuit states that Mary became deeply depressed and traumatized due to Tyra's abusive treatment and the negative experience of being on the show. It remains unclear whether Jane's case reached court or was settled, as her and her husband's performance didn't even make it to the final cut. The lawsuit sparked little to no public interest and was soon forgotten about. Tyra was eventually replaced as host in 2019. Shortly afterwards, she began going viral for several unflattering clips of her time on America's Next Top Model, and was accused of racism for allowing contestants of said show to wear blackface. AGT was sued again in March 2018 when the family of Maureen Allen filed a 20-page complaint, alleging that she fell from her wheelchair outside of the Pasadena Civic Auditorium, where the show was being filmed, and sustained serious injuries which resulted in multiple operations and hospitalizations. On the day of the fall, Maureen and her husband were volunteering at a sponsored science and engineering fair which was held at the auditorium. When they tried to enter the venue, they discovered there were no available access points for disabled people, as all but one were blocked by the show's filming equipment and trailers. The lawsuit claims that a large power cord protector obstructed the entry to said access point. While maneuvering her wheelchair over the power cord protector, Maureen suffered head and arm injuries and a broken hip. After the incident, she suffered from a stroke and blood clots and had to be operated on eight times. In June 2017, she was placed on life support but passed away after a few days. The outcome of the lawsuit remains to be confirmed. Although many hopefuls walk away disappointed from AGT, the show has also launched some of America's greatest success stories in the entertainment industries. The ventriloquist Terry Fader, for example, auditioned in the show's second season and won, which led to him signing a multi-million dollar contract to headline shows in Las Vegas. Terry is believed to have been born in the mid-1960s in Dallas, Texas. The future star obtained a college degree from Virginia's Liberty University, but his passion always lay in ventriloquism, a hobby that he took up while in fifth grade, inspired to do so after stumbling upon a book on the subject entitled Ventriloquism for Fun and Profit by Paul Winchell. A few weeks later, having read the book, Terry bought a Willy Talk dummy and won $25 for his first ventriloquism performance at a church picnic. Throughout his childhood, Terry would entertain family and friends with his ventriloquism acts and impersonations of celebrities. His mother saved up for three years to buy him his first puppet as an 18th birthday gift, and the rest, as they say, is history. In 1987, Terry began touring as the lead singer of Freedom Jam, a band which performed at over 200 high and middle schools across the US and Canada. The following year, he became the lead singer for Texas The Band and incorporated his puppet, Walter T. Airedale, into his shows. The band originally planned to sign with a major record label, but the deal fell through when a representative asked Terry to sing in his own voice, having noticed that the latter impersonated other vocalists when singing. Upon leaving the band, Terry combined ventriloquism and comedy into a solo act. After a particularly bad setback in which just one person attended his show in a 1,000-seat theater, Terry contemplated changing careers, but was encouraged by his nearest and dearest to keep pushing. Despite continuing as a ventriloquist for several years, Terry was by then in his late 30s and doubted that he'd ever be commercially successful. Things changed in 2005 when Terry began including impersonations in his routines. Eventually, he became an opening act for Garth Brooks, Reba McIntyre, and Neil McCoy, among others, and performed at corporate functions for big companies. Fast forward two years later, 
Terry auditioned for AGT, having seen that the ventriloquist in the first season of the competition had performed on The Late Show with David Letterman, even after being eliminated by the judges. I figure I'd do three episodes like he did and end up on David Letterman, Terry explained in one of his interviews after winning. Ironically, his schedule was so jam-packed after winning that he had to turn down over a dozen gigs. From an 11-year residency at the Mirage in Las Vegas to doing voiceover work for the Disney Channel, the Dallas native's career has gone from strength to strength thanks to AGT and shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. The Canadian-American magician Shin Lim is yet another AGT success story, even though the talent show didn't exactly discover him. Known for his use of sleight of hand and card manipulation, Shin's elaborate magic routines are even more amazing when you consider that he's self-taught, having learned most of his skills from YouTube videos. Shin was born in 1991 in Vancouver, British Columbia and double majored in piano and telecommunications at the School of Music of Lee University in Tennessee. His dreams of becoming a professional pianist were dashed when at the age of 20 he was diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome which affects the lower arms. However, Shin had also been interested in magic since his childhood, having taught himself several tricks. Forced to choose between music or magic, as the Lee School required Shin to spend up to 20 hours a week practicing piano, Shin took a year-long sabbatical from his studies and began developing new magic tricks and recording them for YouTube. During said sabbatical, he finished in 6th place at the 2012 International Federation of Magic Societies and was contacted by an agent in 2013 with a lucrative offer to tour China. Thanks to the success of the tour, Shin dropped out of the Lee School of Music to pursue magic full-time. Two years later, he won the World Championship for Close-Up Magic, hosted yet again by the International Federation of Magic Societies. Producers of the magic show Penn & Teller Fool Us got in touch with Shin after his World Championship win, having also seen his YouTube videos. Following his 2015 appearance in Fool Us, Shin was approached by AGT producers who were interested in seeing his performance close up. Shin initially turned down the offer, but in 2017 finally felt ready to participate. His fiance, Casey Thomas, also influenced his decision by encouraging him to go on the show. In September 2018, Shin was announced as the winner of the show's 13th season and subsequently headlined an act at the Paris Theatre in Las Vegas. The following year, the magician began a long-term residence at the Terry Fader Theatre in Las Vegas and toured with a theatrical magician troupe show, The Illusionists. These days, he has plenty of projects lined up and is considered yet another AGT success story despite already having a fan base prior to competing in the show. AGT itself has been renewed for an 18th season, whereas AGT All-Stars premiered in January 2023 and has received positive viewership figures so far. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.